Question 5 from Section 1 of the 2017 Higher Physics Examination. A galaxy has a recessional velocity of 0.30 c. Hubble's law predicts that the distance between the Earth and this galaxy is the following. I've given you five choices. We know that recessional velocity is the velocity that moves away from us. And we know that 0.30c means 0.30 times the speed of light. So, what exactly is Hubble's law and what is it? Here we have the man himself. And Hubble said the following, The speed that galaxies move away from the Earth is directly proportional to the distance they are away. In other words, the further the galaxy is away, the faster it moves away. So we're looking for an equation where we have the velocity equal to a constant times the distance. And we know we can look up our relationship sheet. And there it is there. And you can see the equation we're going to use is the bottom one in the first column, V, the recessional velocity. It's equal to H naught, that's, that's the constant, Hubble's constant, times the D. So all we have to do is write down that equation and we're on our way. Uh, v equals H naught D. Now if we take away our relationship sheets, take that away and say bye bye to Mr Hubble, then we've got the following equation. V equals H naught D. Hubble's constant, we can look up in our data sheets. There it is there. H naught is given the value of, down the bottom there, 2.3 times 10 to minus 18 uh, seconds to the minus 1. So H naught would be Hubble's constant, which is going to be 2.3 times 10 to the minus 18 seconds to the minus 1. We know V, we're told that in the question, it's 0 0.30 and it's given a value of C, so we have to multiply that by 3 times 10 to the power 8 to give us our meters per second. And finally, we have got to find the value of d, the distance the galaxy is away from us. So if we rearrange things, then we can do the following. We can say that uh, v equals h naught d. Therefore, v divided by h naught is going to equal to the distance, dividing both sides by by h naught, Hubble's constant. Put in the numbers, and the top we have got 0 0.3 times 3 times 10 to the power 8 and that's going to be meters per second and we're dividing that by a distance d distance a Hubble uh, constant which is h naught so it's going to be 2.3 times 10 to minus 18 seconds to minus 1 you can see the units work well seconds to minus 1 cancels with seconds to minus 1 and you're left with meters and that's what we're after so if we do that in our calculator we end up with an answer that the distance d from the Earth to this galaxy is going to be 3.91 times 10, and it's going to be times 25, power 25 metres. So that's the distance away. So if you look closely at it, you can see that our answer will be b in this case. So the answer for this multiple choice question will be b. Question 6 from Section 1 of the 2017 Higher Physics Exam. Measurements of the expansion rate of the universe lead to the conclusion that the rate of expansion is increasing. This present theory proposes that this is due to, and you're given your five descriptions there. Now we know that the universe is expanding, we know that its rate of expansion is increasing, and the only reason we can describe that's happening is it's caused by some strange dark energy, which means energy we have not seen. In the world of physics, if you get the word dark in front of something, it usually means we don't understand what's happening. So it's really the dark energy which is actually causing the rate of expansion of the universe. So the answer to that one, number six, is going to be C for our final answer. Question seven from section one of the 2017 Higher Physics Examination. A student makes the following statements about the radiation emitted by stellar objects. Stellar objects are stars. Statement number one, stellar objects emit radiation over a wide range of frequencies. Statement 2. The peak wavelength of radiation is longer for hotter objects than for cooler objects. 
and statement three, at all frequencies, hotter objects emit more radiation per unit surface area per unit time than cooler objects. And which of these statements is or are correct? You're given usual five. Now, to study this question, you have to really be well up in your black body spectrum graphs, because these, are, in fact, are almost the same as the, as the stars, the stellar objects. A stellar object can be considered as a black body. Now, if you go to the famous PHET site, you can play about with graphs of this nature here. And there's the black body radiation graph of a particular star or a body, which is at a temperature of 5,900 Kelvin. You can play about with them. Here's one here where the temperature is actually a lot less. The temperature is going to be 5,000 Kelvin. So let's use these two graphs to answer our question. Well, first of all, stellar objects emit radiation over a wide range of frequencies. And you can see that is true. Because from both graphs, from the cool object on the right to the hot object on the left, you can see that uh, the radiation is emitted over lots of wavelengths, which corresponds to lots of frequencies. You can see that shown there. So our first answer, our first statement, sorry, is going to be correct. So statement one is correct. Statement two says the peak wavelength of radiation is longer for hotter objects than for cooler objects. Well, you can see the 5,900 Kelvin uh, object, the object at that temperature, the peak of the radiation output sits at 0 0.491 micrometers, that's its wavelength. But the cooler object down here, you can see the peak is at 0 0.588. So it seems to be it's the peak, uh, the, the cooler objects that have the longer wavelength. And for statement two, it says the peak wavelength of radiation is longer for hot objects. Well, that's obviously wrong. You can see the hotter object becomes the peak wavelength shifts over towards the small wavelength uh, region. So statement two from the graphs is in fact wrong. Statement three is a long statement to read. At all frequencies, hotter objects emit more radiation per unit surface area per unit time than cooler objects. Now, what that really means is, if you want to find out the total uh, radiation emitted for per unit surface, you really have to look at the area under these black body spectrum graphs. And you can see for the 5000K, the cooler object, uh, the area of the graph is a lot less than the area of the 5900 Kelvin, the hotter object. So, at all frequencies, hotter objects will emit more radiation per unit surface, per unit area time than uh, cooler objects. So, this statement three is going to be correct. So, we've got th two statements out of the three. Statement one, statement three, uh, you look at the list and you can see it's going to be D one and three only. So our answer is going to be statement D. But it's well worth the effort to go to the PHED site, I'll put a link to it in the in the notes below the questions, and study the graphs of these black body radiations. It's very important that you do so. Question 8 from section 1 of the 2017 Higher Physics Examination. The following statement represents a nuclear reaction. 256103LR and it reacts represented by the arrow to give you Z plus 42HE and we're told or asked to find what the nucleus Z is from those five choices. And by the looks of it, we've also got to name the elements symbol from the periodic table. So just a wee quick recap for us, we have got the nuclear symbol there and we know that Z, the capital Z, will represent the element symbol in the periodic table. We know the top number is the mass number and the mass number really represents the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. The bottom number, that represents the number of protons in the nucleus, and it's called the atomic number. And it's the atomic number that enables us to identify the periodic symbol for that element which we're missing, called Z.
Now, one thing also in any nuclear reaction, the total mass numbers, if you add them up on the left-hand side of the arrow, should equal the total mass numbers on the right-hand side of the arrow. And likewise, the bottom number, the total atomic number, if you add all the atomic numbers on the left-hand side, and that should equal the total number of atomic numbers on the uh, right-hand side when you add them up. So we'll rewrite that equation out again. Uh, to make it easy for us, we'll have 256, that's the mass number for LR. And it's got an atomic number of 103. And it reacts to give us this missing nucleus Z. And we'll write it as A, Z, B, where A represents the missing mass number, B represents the missing atomic number. Plus, and it's going to be HE4, 2, like that, the helium nucleus, the alpha particle. Okay, so the total mass number on the left-hand side is going to be 256. And that should be equal to, if you add up the mass numbers on the right-hand side, which is A plus 4. And that would imply then that the missing mass number A is going to be 252. So I can put that in up here, Z252. Two. Still haven't identified what the symbol is, so I'll just keep writing Z. What about the atomic numbers? Well, on the left-hand side, add them all up. There's only one there, 103, and that's going to equal to B plus 2. And that would imply that B, the atomic number for the nucleus under concern, is going to be 101. And that will enable us to find out what the nucleus is. So we go to our periodic table, which will be in your examination at the end of the booklets, and there we have it there. And if we look at the atomic number 101, all of these are atomic numbers. So 101 is down here, there it is there, and it's MD, capital M, small d, and it's Mendelevium. Uh, so it's going to be, uh, change this will change to give us this here, MD. And 252 and 101. So that's what we're looking for, Mendelevium. And if you look down your list, bingo, it's the very first one, MD, 252, mass number 101. So the answer to question 8 is going to be A.